Well, the starting lineups are set. It's number one versus number eight. Northwest barely squeaked into this final seed of the Triple C Conference Tournament. And Northwest certainly looking to take down a Goliath, the team that has not lost in 21 straight competitions. And in this tournament, they have been undefeated the last five conference tournaments. That's 15 straight wins in the Cascade Collegiate Conference Tournament. Starting five for the visiting Northwest Eagles. Luke Howard, the big man. Inside number zero, number one, Nashville Brock, Lewis Pope, Trent Williams, and Manuel Zapater rounded out for the Eagles wearing their road navies. Howard wins the opening tip, or rather that was Zapater who jumped center. Starting five on the floor, quite familiar. Samaje Morgan. And Johnny Radford, the two in the backcourt, the two wings, Drew Wyman and Jake O'Neill, Tyler Robinette will occupy the center. Halfway through the shot clock on the first possession. Zapater inside, multiple pump fakes, turns it around. Offensive board by Howard on the inside, missed the body put back, tipped around, finds his way to Tyler Robinette. Jake O'Neill leaks out the other direction, no numbers. Wyman, spot up from the right wing, just rattles out. Brought down by Luke Howard. Luke Howard last time out had 30 points, 10 rebounds. He spots up for a long range three and banks it in. These are two teams that saw each other twice this year as with every conference opponent. And the first game was a blowout in favor of the Yos. Robinette splashes in a three to answer. It was a 38 point win for the Yotes here in the J.A. Albertson Activity Center back in February. But the last time they saw each other 11 days ago in Kirkland, Washington. And the Eagles played them tight. Just 85 to 73 as Zapater misses from the mid range. Morgan on the inside. Oh, what a move! Northwest plays with two traditional posts. They go inside to Howard. Double team comes. Zip down to Zapater. And they do such a good job of seeing that double on the inside. Interior passing. Morgan kicks it off to Radford who drives, hesitates, gets into the lane, elevates. Got it to fall and count the bucket. And what an opportunity for Johnny Radford, who most of his four-year career here in Caldwell has been based on prolific three-point shooting. But this season, he has turned into an all-around player, doing much more on the inside. And Radford converts it. Radford gets sent to the floor and draws the offensive foul. It was Lewis Pope that had a little extension with the off arm. Yotes up 8-5. Just over two minutes into the ball game. Quarterfinal matchup. The eight versus the one. All upper seeds will host at their home sites. And as the one seed, the Yotes will Hosts all three rounds. O'Neal on the drive and the easy layup with the left hand. Inside, Howard, double team, kicks it out, swings it around. Finds his way to Pope on the right wing, looking for Zapater on the inside. Robinette playing him three quarters. Covers well, Zapater trying to lower the shoulder. Got it blocked by Robinette. Oh, they said he got armed. They called a foul, and everyone here in attendance is arguing that one. Three, 
Zapater rattles in the first. And Northwest is going to keep this within reason for as long as they can. There have been multiple times where the Yotes just get out to nasty first half leads. And the Eagles stuck with them last time they saw each other less than two weeks ago. It was 42-42 at half. And then the Yotes started to pull away late in that game. Caleb Whalen checks in, gets his first minutes as Pope goes to the bench. Samaj Morgan attacks him on the first possession he's in and missed the layup with all the contact. Zapater in the middle. Goes back to Whalen. They thought he walked. No call. Zapater tracks down the offensive rebound. Kicks it out outside. And the Trent Williams three is brought down by Drew Wyman. Leaking out Samaj Morgan. Cuts through defenders. O'Neal from the right wing. Just short. High tempo game outside of a couple free throws. Just getting up and down the floor, these two. Spot up three. Off the mark from Luke Howard. And the only real traditional post that the Yotes have is Paul Wilson. He is not in the starting lineup today. And with Zapater and Howard on the inside, it's going to be interesting how Wyman and Robinette can match up and hold their own. Whalen open from the top. Oh, they almost had a second banked in three. Radford hesitating, elevating, fouled. That one will go against Trent Williams. And Radford using his shot making ability to his advantage. That little shot fake, a hezzy, gets his defender on his backside and holds him there all the way until he gets into the painted area. Multiple subs set to check in for the Oats. Stratton Rogers and Alex Germer will check in. Stratton Rogers, probably one of the most high energy, active players you will see come off the bench in this entire conference. Radford goes two for two at the line. Caden Handron will come in for him, leaving Robinette and Morgan from the original starting five. Just over four minutes have gone. 12 7 the lead for the number one seed, College of Idaho Yotes. Whalen against that 2-3, inside to Howard. The dump down, the block from behind. Caden Handren will get credit. Going up with it was Micaiah Hagen, who had it pinned by Handron, and then Rogers off the rebound, lost it out of bounds. Wobrock will inbound from the baseline. Over the top, Howard pushes off on Morgan. He wanted the call. Falling into that 2-3 is the Yotes. Off the foot of Robinette. That one's not called either. A two-on-one. Morgan pulls up from the mid-range, and it rolls out. Rogers tried to tip it. And Howard comes away, runs the break. And for 6-9, does a lot in transition for these Eagles. Does Luke Howard. Hagen, a little floater, good. I think he was surprised to see himself that wide open in the middle of the key. Morgan, a screen from Robinette. Sizing up Whalen, kicks to Germer in the corner. Brought down Trent Williams. Trying to push tempo. Gets a nudge from Rogers. Swings it to Whalen on the left wing. Trying to find some way to work against this 2-3 zone. Howard given enough space goes back iron. That is something that Northwest has been able to do is they get into the high post. They love working high low with those two big guys inside. And they've been able to do that with positioning against the 2-3 of the College of Idaho. Smaj Morgan's three ball misses the mark. And Northwest a chance to tie on this possession. Whalen inside to Howard getting pushes off the glass. Can't fall through.
Morgan a step back, mid-range, finally hits one. Oh, that pass was intended for Howard in the middle. He thought it was going over the top. Handron steals it away. He kicks to Morgan right wing. His three ball hits bottom. Forces a timeout from Northwest head coach Rick Skeen. We'll take a break with him as the Yotes go on a run. They're up 17 to 9. Not quite seven minutes into the ball game, a 17-9 lead for the College of Idaho as they take on the conference's number eight seed in the Northwest Eagles. You may have noticed on the C of I sideline, no Colby Blaine. He was ejected after drawing two technical fouls on senior day on Saturday. That deflection by Stratton Rogers finds its way into the hands of Alice Shermer. Another turnover by Northwest. Swinging around, finds its way to Dougie Peoples. Right wing takes a screen, swings it around Paul Wilson. Rogers, a screen, attacks, reverse pivot, floater. Oh, that's pretty. So Colby Blaine serving his one game suspension for the ejection. Whalen, Zapater, right elbow, just rims out. Underneath, Rogers had it blocked from behind. Zapater, great recovery along the baseline. And now we will take our under 13 media timeout, 19-9. Yotes on top, 12-17 left in the first. Yotes out to a 10 point lead, not quite halfway through the first half. And it has been in these first 20 minutes all season long when the Yotes have punished opponents. Rogers on the inside, finishes with the off right hand. They come in in some full court pressure, rather Dougie Peoples was in the wrong defense. They fall into a 1-3-1. Paul Wilson occupies the center. They draw them all the way out to the perimeter. Certainly an aggressive 1-3-1. They go high-low between Zapater and Howard. No foul called underneath with Germer. And then Dougie Peoples is called for a push, or rather a hold, underneath. And in having a brief conversation with head coach Colby Blaine before this one, he said Northwest does such a good job of using that interior passing, trying to go high-low. And they have tried to attack that every single possession. Rogers, how about the up effort, the hustle play, and Germer caps it off with an easy deuce. Pope back into the game. Inside Zapater into the corner. Elevation, mid-range, no offensive board by Luke Howard. Three ball on the way, still misfires. Northwest really was only in the game 11 days ago with C of I because they shot over 47% from three. How about the handoff? Handron to Germer. Count the bucket and the foul. Gosh, this second unit just plays so well together. You have all five facets. Facets. That you need on the you floor at one on time. You've got a distributor in Caden Andrew. You've got, got a traditional coach in Paul Wilson. You've got a hustle you've got guy. A, hustle a guy. second effort second guy. Effort in Stratton Rogers. You've got knockdown shooters. Knock you've got knockdown shooters. In Dougie Peoples. In Dougie Peoples. And Alex Sherman. And Alex Sherman. And Alex Sherman. The traditional. The traditional. The traditional. The traditional. The traditional. The traditional. Back into the one three one. Trying to mix up some defensive looks on Northwest. That is Dominic Wilson who had the ball in his hands on the right wing. Stop the tear. He had it deflected away. Great read by Caden and then his cross court pass is way out ahead of Rogers.
Wilson around to Pope, finds himself open and cans the three. Finally, Northwest is back on the board. After a couple minutes of a scoring drought, offensive board pulled down by Wilson. Germer, short corner, bodies up Wilson, gets into the middle. His little shot put is just off the front rim. Yotes still more than doubling up the Eagles from Northwest. Trekking it out here from Kirkland, Washington. Into the middle, Zapater has space, kicks it into the corner. Trent Williams fires in a three. Over the top. Pass goes awry. Good defense by Williams. Student section wanted to travel on Howard. He goes at the body of Paul Wilson, then just chucks it up and draws the foul. Howard goes heel and still has it drop in. Starting five back into the game for the Oats. And George Mitrovich checks in as well as Nash Wobrock for Northwest. So they've really got four guards around Luke Howard. Although Mitrovic certainly plays kind of a stretch four, if you will. He switches on to Robinette uh, inside. Wyman has a mismatch, decides to circle it out to O'Neill. Radford takes a screen, just a slight one. Swings it to Morgan. Morgan drives baseline. How quick! The electric factory of Samaj Morgan. Oh, Mitrovic just... Past that before he even saw an opening. Trying to go high-low off of a jump pass. Where his, his feet didn't even touch the floor. And I think his basketball IQ a little ahead of the game. And not in a good way. 27-16. Just over nine minutes remaining here in the first half. Howard bodies up Robinette. Brick wall of Robinette. The fall away from Howard. Drops through. Tough shot. They're going to force him to shoot those all game long. Radford just off. Offensive rebound, O'Neal. Radford never twice. Oh, he misses off the back rim. Wobrock, the lefty. And O'Neal, another rebound. Had a double double. When he saw Northwest last, Robinette from the top of the key. Contest doesn't matter. That's a triple to the dome. Oh, a pull-up three from Pope. Interesting shot selection. Radford gets into the paint, hesitates, turns around, falls away. How good is that? from six foot, just knows how to create space. Mitrovic, oh goodness. O'Neal on the drive, tried to dump it around, around the body of the defender. Finds its way, swung around to Morgan, gets a screen into the lane, sneaks through two, and hits it with the left hand. How good is this kid, Samaj Morgan? He's got 11 first half points. Another push off. No, they're going to get Radford for going into the body of Pope first. And then Pope is mimicking by throwing his head back. So a block was called on Johnny Radford, just the team's fourth foul of the half. No foul trouble for either side.
Zapater gets in deep, double team, swings it into the corner. Howard lines it up and hits. A lot of ball screens. Morgan from the mid range just off. Pope brings down the rebound. The Yotes have wanted to get into a lot more ball screen offense, a lot more motion, not have to depend so much on post ups early in possessions. If they need a one on one, they can always get that. But they would much rather stay in the flow. Try to get some lanes moving towards the basket, and it's paid off for both Radford and Morgan so far today. Radford a screen into the paint. Another fall away. And rebound by Howard. Howard has not taken a seat, and you're starting to see it with him lumbering from one end of the floor to the next. Zapater spinning. Back iron. Radford there to haul it in. And Wobrock, Wobrock, pardon me, chasing after. Howard is calling for a sub, but we've got a media timeout cup coming. Subs due for both sides. We'll step aside. Yotes are up 34-21 Northwest, just inside striking distance. Six minutes, 10 seconds left in the first half, and Luke Howard has been absolutely filling up the stat sheet despite a 13-point deficit for his Northwest Eagles. He's got nine points and eight rebounds on the other end of things. 11 points for Samaj Morgan in the putback by Stratton Rogers. Rogers up to six points and three boards himself. Howard wants more, just misses short. Had the mismatch by O'Neill and Fell for it. Oh, Neil, how did that get to go? Takes contact from two, hits the two, and has a chance at one. Oh, Jake O'Neill just airballed a free throw. I don't think I've ever seen that out of him. At least he's, uh, he's shaking his head, smiling towards the bench. He knows that's uncharacteristic. He does have eight first half rebounds. I mean, you can let a guy airball a free throw every now and then if he's pulling down eight boards. Pope with the ball. Wobrock inside to Hagen. Hagen doesn't even look at the basket. Now he finally does. Backs down Robinette. Didn't get any space and still put it up. Handren pulls down the one-handed rebound. Swings it to Robinette. Transition three. Way off the mark. Wobrock on the dive. Hagen to Zapater through his hands in turnover. Paul Wilson checks in for Tyler Robinette. 38-21, a 17-point lead for the College of Idaho Yotes. Caden Handren calls out the play. He might as well just be a coach on the floor. Morgan takes a screen. Oh, the hezzy. Oh, the hands. One up with the right, finished with the left and the extension. Samaj Morgan so good at the rim. Doesn't play above it, but at the rim, he is so smart. Got a little overexcited on that one. Stratton Rogers pulls it down. Jake O'Neill a long three. Bang. 43-21. One. This is what they do. Yotes are up big with 4.09 left in the first half. We'll take a quick break. 
And be back with more. 4.09 left in the first half. Taylor Lundquist with you here in the J.A. Albertson Activity Center. Yotes on top, 43-21. Samaje Morgan has started to all but take over the scoring load in this first half. Hagen on the inside. Good defense by Caden Handren. Morgan has 13 first half points. Averages just under 14 and a half on the season. And he has led this team in scoring each of the last four times out. Rodgers being given space in the corner. Wyman a pump fake, a drive, a dump down to Handren. Handren finishes easily. Zapater the elbow, backdoor cut, and the pass gets away from Zapater. Just led Trent Williams a little too much. And Dominic Wilson will come back in for Wobrock. Andrin takes a screen. Reverse pivot kicks out to Peoples. Peoples in the lane with the right hand off the front iron and down. Wilson, Pope, Williams play catch around the perimeter. Deflected by Rogers. They're just trying to pepper that high post to Zapater. He Dribbled it off his own foot. Rogers in transition, weaving, swinging it around. Wyman, Handren, attacking, spinning, pump fake. Can't finish, but there is a foul. Just plays so within himself, this Caden Handren. So we knew coming into this that Northwest was going to need to be near perfect. And they've shot pretty successfully from three-point land, 36% as a team. They are shooting under 25% from the field. Give it up for the interior defense of the Yotes, Exhibit A. Finding Handren in transition. Why am I going to spot up? Long range three. Kick ahead to Dominic Wilson. Picked up by Rogers. Stops the break. Kicks back Pope. Just barely hits the front rim. Peoples wants to run. Swings it across to Handren. Handren finds the cutting. Wyman, who lays it up and in, plus a foul. Uh, you could see Wilson rim running. Looked like Handren was going to go to him, and then the trail rim run by Drew Wyman. That is high basketball IQ, hard to guard. It is a 30-point lead for the Oats, and we've still got 148 left here in the first half, 51-21. Wyman converts. The old-fashioned three-point play. Now, I've said it once this year, and I will say it plenty of times again. This team in this gym is a different animal. Wilson on the inside, finds the cutting whale and blocked by Paul Wilson.
Handron lets Wyman dial up another and still can't hit. Wyman just hit one, or just had that three point play for his first points of the game. It was a foul on Paul Wilson with contact to the head. He'll be subbed out for Tyler Robinette. They'll share a laugh on his way to the bench. A little full court pressure here. Wailing into Wilson. Trying to go against Wyman. Goes to the left hand. That's not going to get you many buckets. Then Wayland is fouled by Drew Wyman. Caught a lot of hand. As Wayland knew that he was surrounded on all sides. And might as well just throw one up. Hope for a foul. And he got it. They're actually going to credit Caden Handron with that foul, not Drew Wyman. Whalen good on the first. Luke Howard will take a seat for Hagen. And Whalen goes two for two on the trip. Inside of a second, and inside of a minute rather. Kick back to Wyman, spins into the lane, spins back baseline, and the little runner is up and good. Pretty touch from 22 and White. And good job to go quick on that possession, get a two for one to end the half with a 31 point lead. Mitrovic and Whalen on the perimeter inside Hagen. Hagen, reverse is good. Shot clock turns off. Pandren will slowly bring it across the timeline and set up the final play of the first period. With eight seconds, they'll start their motion. Wyman to the right wing, a post up for Handren who gets sent to the floor roughly. That is the eighth team foul on Northwest. And a one and one upcoming for Caden Handren. And Wyman has been squatting a bunch here. And looks like he's trying to shake something off there. It might have been, I mean, he originally showed that sort of grimace after the and one he had multiple possessions ago. And he keeps looking at that right hand of his. Handron's first free throw is butter. Handron two for two. Whalen takes it out. Double clutch. Hits the front rim. Hey, we're going to halftime. 56-25. The Oats on top. Big. We'll be back after halftime. Second half about to get underway. The Oats on top. 56-25. to The Oats have been coming out hot. All season long, outscoring opponents by an astronomical number in the first half. Tell you what's with you inside the J.A. Albertson Activity Center. This is the quarterfinals, the eight versus the one, Northwest versus College of Idaho. Samaj so Morgan leads all scorers with his 13 points. He put in 26 last time he saw Northwest just 11 days ago. Robinette. On the elbow, kicks it to Radford, who has a lane. Kicks back to Robinette, swings across. Wide open Morgan. Gets the lane, elevates off the drive, and finishes with two. (laughs) 
foul is called on the inside on Drew Wyman. What impressed me so much about the first half is Northwest, you knew, was going to try to go high-low between Howard and Zapater. And the Yotes have done such a good job of not allowing interior passing without having to completely collapse the perimeter defenders. I mean, just a quick double, a recover from the weak side, and just fly around and play basketball. Give and go, Radford, the one-handed lay. And what the Yotes can do is get hot in a minute. What they haven't been is hot from beyond, but they are doing such a good job of just attacking open lanes. Zapater gets Rowanette in the air and finishes off the window. Morgan again gets into the lane that time. Got it blocked away by Trent Williams as he tried to go back to the right hand with English. Wyman gets fouled by Wobrock off of the rip through and drive and talk about dispersing the weight I mean you've got Morgan with 15 Robinette's got six Radford's got nine O'Neill has seven Radford adds in two more to get to 11 Drew Wyman has five. And then the bench as well. You've got six for Handron, six for Rogers, four for Germer. Peoples has two. Wilson, the only one with minutes and no bucket. Zapater posting up O'Neill, trying to go baseline, spins back to the middle. Radford was discarded on the Wobrock putback. Wide open, Jake O'Neill, set shot, down and out. And what you can't do if you're the Oats is come out flat here in the second half. Williams in the right corner, no good off his left hand. Pope caught contact to the eye it looked like as he went to go get it. And Williams misses again from just about the same spot. Radford, the defensive board. Pushing pace in the other direction. Finally slows it down. Give and go with Robinette. Gets into the lane. Euro. Oh, how pretty. Slow it down, young man. Speed is an important part of the game. But even more essential is change of speeds. Foul is called on Samaj Morgan. Got a hit on Pope. Two three zone. Wobrock left wing at the body of O'Neill puts it up with the left hand off the mark, and then Wobrock thought it was off O'Neill. The official thought otherwise. We're going the other direction. Oh, Radford had just enough space. Too strong. Skip pass to Howard. Into the corner, Lewis Pope. Knocked out of the hand by Samaj Morgan. Stays here. Lewis Pope calls out the play. Skip to Trent Williams inside Zapater. The pump fake gets Robinette up. And the put back is good by Luke Howard. Zapater has done a great job utilizing that shot fake on the inside. And Robinette has fallen for it just about every single time. O'Neill that time passes up an open look. Finds Radford left wing. 
Robinette, too indecisive there, knocked away. Wo Brock tried to slam it, finds its way to Trent Williams, who gets the 10 and finishes. Boy, that was uncharacteristic by Wo Brock, and that is characteristic by Drew Wyman as he nails the left wing three. He's got eight points. Morgan tried to cut through the passing lane. Trent Williams still has it and nails the straight on three. Oh, Morgan got fouled, no call. Lewis Pope in transition, gets a bump from Radford, checks back to the three-point line, tipped out by Drew Wyman. Smart play, and now Morgan slows it down. Over five minutes gone in the second half. 67-36. Exactly what the lead was at the intermission. Double screen for Morgan. Into the corner. O'Neal. They're giving him all the space. He'll hesitate and still miss the mark. Morgan, the offensive board. Gets through two and fouled. And the Yotes have been playing really, really good basketball tonight. Just three turnovers so far in the game for a team who averages 9.9. .9. And 10 is really the benchmark. If you are below 10 in any game, that is solid. But over the course of a season, unbelievable. They forced eight turnovers by Northwest, a team who averages just under 15 a game. And that is really the biggest difference between these two teams. One takes care of the ball, and one a little less so. Two free throws good for Samaj A. Morgan. Woe Brock swings it to Howard in the corner. Into Zapater, the middle of the paint, rebound Stratton Rogers. Rogers, Handren, Germer, lines it up. Wilson, the weak side offensive rebound, hold by Luke Coward on that rebound. And Hagen will come in with for Howard after he just picked up his third personal. Good finish by Stratton Rogers. Goes to that left hand. Backdoor cut Pope. Leaves it off to Zapater who finally finishes. Boy, he has been struggling with touch at the basket. Up ahead, Handren, just out of reach of Germer. And we'll take Immediate timeout, 71-38. I'll say it one more time, Yotes up big. Seventy-one to thirty-eight, Yotes in control. Thirteen forty-one left in the ball game. It has been the Samaj Morgan show. His 17 points, Johnny Radford's 13. They combined for 46 last time they saw Northwest. And they're, they're already combining for 30. Zapater on the inside. Germer, a brick wall, passes it along the baseline to Hagen. Can't body up Paul Wilson. Hagen still finds a way, gets to that left hand, and finishes. A little token pressure from Northwest. Andrew and Rogers, a good job breaking it. Peoples in the corner, just rattles out. Trent Williams down with the board. Hagen trying to do it once more. Wow. I don't think he even took a single look at the rim when he took that shot. Still using the shoulder, getting some leverage. And it's a pretty good touch from the young man.
They're trying to get that ball to the high post with Handren. Oh, he tries to make it himself. Tipped away, off the rim again. Handren down with the offensive board. Inside Paul Wilson, what a find. Wilson, the last player to score for the Oats among those who have played. Now everyone in the scoring column. Pope, three ball. Yikes. And the serenade ensues. Blue Coward back in for Zapater. Semifinals will take place 7.30 p.m. on Saturday, the 2nd. Handren into the paint, dumps it down to Stratton Rogers. I'll tell you what, this kid just draws eyes and dishes. Stratton Rogers up to double figures with 10 points. Hagen once again gets to that left hand. He finished it again. Paul Wilson being put in the spin cycle by Micaiah Hagen. Rogers lofts it up for Wilson, who brings it down but couldn't finish the reverse on the right side. Contact by Peoples on the drive, and they'll call a foul on the freshman. Hagen threw that off of multiple Yotes. Hey, now the starting five will check back in. Great minutes from the second unit there. Bucket is up and good by Micaiah Hagen. He's got 12 points, and a sneakily 12 points. Germer, front rim, O'Neal skying high over everybody and puts it back. That is what he has done for all four of his years here at C of I. Howard on the drive, gets enough space and finishes with the left. O'Neal. Oh, how did he finish that? The up and under. Morgan is called for a block on the other end. Well, the winner of this game. We will speculate. 31-point lead, 10 minutes to go. We will speculate College of Idaho moves on to the semifinals. Nothing definitive, never anything definitive. But if the Yotes move forward after tonight, they will see the lowest remaining seed. So if there are any upsets between Eastern Oregon, Bushnell, or Corbin, they will see one of them. Otherwise, we expect them to see Southern Oregon, the team who gave them their first conference loss in two years. Robinette blocks Wilson. O'Neal out in transition, finds Radford, wanted to pull. He's swinging around, O'Neal in the short corner, goes baseline, reverse pivoting, finds Morgan, Wyman in the corner, left wide open, bottoms. 
you just can't stop this team. They play such good basketball together. And it's not like they're running set after set. They're just playing in the flow, run their motion, get in deep and kick. O'Neal carries that one over the baseline. And that draws another timeout. And another media, 82-48. Fans are on their feet. Well, the Yotes are on top big. And if we take a look into the other games going on, the two seed, Lewis Clark State, is taking on Eastern Oregon. They're up 25-15. Bushnell trails by just one to Oregon Tech. That's the three versus six game. Oregon Tech playing host to Bushnell. That's 22 21 and then Corbin and Southern Oregon are just a bit behind. It's a foul underneath by Drew Wyman. And that Corbin and Southern Oregon game started about 20 minutes ago. So you can go in and check on that one, the four versus five. Pope in the corner, looks for Hagen again. See if he can continue his run. He gets partially blocked by Robinette. Radford shimmies into the lane and kicks it out. Robinette off on the three. Radford looked like he was gonna dive headlong into the padding along the wall there. Smartly does not. Certainly no need to at this point in the ball game. Good footwork on the inside. Luke Howard. Jake O'Neal pulls down a rebound. I gotta I gotta check this. How many rebounds does this kid have? Oh, he almost pulled down another, but stepped on the end line. Jake O'Neal has eleven points, eleven rebounds. Yet another double double for Jake O'Neal. Jake O'Neill now has 27 career double-doubles, his 10th of the year tonight. Foul on Dominic Wilson along the baseline against Johnny Radford, who is trying to cut open into the corner. Shot clock resets to a fresh 20. Four starters in double figures, and it's those four, or rather Robinette is one who averages double figures. O'Neill just under 10. Morgan with 17, Radford with 13, O'Neill and Wyman with 11 apiece. Morgan trying to add to it, dishes to Robinette in the short corner. X pass to Jake O'Neill. They left him wide open all day, and I think their game plan is starting to pay off a little bit. Hagen at the right elbow, turns and faces, spins back to the left, throws it hard off the front rim. Another foul is called on Drew Wyman, his third personal. And Northwest will be in the one and one bonus for the remaining 7.32. Hagen drops in the first. Back iron off the second. Oh, 
Morgan, what a dish. Robinette went up like he was going to cock that back and throw it down. But he got fouled and lost the handle. I don't think he even can do that. I don't buy it. All for show. Robinette one for two. O'Neill can't slap it out of the hands of the Eagles. And Northwest not playing with a whole lot of intensity necessarily. Hagen in a short corner, skip pass. Now into the corner, Wilson. Wilson jump stop, puts it up. No, Robinette tips it around. Finds its way to Hagen who has been right place, right time. And making just about every shot he puts up. He's got 15 to tie Luke Howard for the lead among Northwest Eagles. Robin out on the inside. Double team. Kicks back to O'Neill. His floater is up and good. Kick by Johnny Radford. He's averaging probably one and a half kicks a game. And I love it. Another media timeout. 6.31 left to go, and the Yotes and their faithful fans are starting to sense another semifinal appearance. Oh 85-53, Caden Handren, Stratton Rogers in the game. Good read by Jake O'Neill. Seeing that lob pass coming, find him in transition, got it stolen away, knocked away, and it was because of the foul called on Luke Howard, who picks up his second personal. Jake O'Neill will have two shots at the free throw line. Let's take a look at the Cascade Collegiate Conference scoreboard. Number two ranked Lewis Clark State up 31 23 over Eastern Oregon. Bushnell, the sixth ranked. Bushnell Barons are giving trouble to Oregon Tech. 31 30 Bushnell leads with about eight minutes left in the first half. And then Southern Oregon up 25 16 on Corbin. Whalen kicks back to Pope. Pope, a skip pass to Wilson. Fires one off. Back rim. Stratton Rogers there to at least poke it to Robinette. Yotes running their rob play, lob play of their own. O'Neill now gets a one on one. Step back from the mid range splash. Yeah, Robinette got in the air once again. Fouls Howard. And one opportunity for the big man out of Vancouver, BC. Germer, Wilson, and Peoples check in for the purple and white. Morgan, O'Neill, Robinette check out. 5-18 left in the game. A 33-point lead for the Yotes. And you already know everyone's just looking forward to seeing Beaver St. Clair take that shooting shirt off and go check in at the scorer's table when his, his name is called. This place erupts for Beaver St. Clair. Germer, toe on the line, just short. Ed 
X pass to Howard, checks his feet. He is in balance behind the three-point line, and he rims out. Over the top to Wilson, who gets fouled by Howard, picks up his third. Wilson rolls in the second. Certain fans in the general admission section starting to filter out here, feeling this Yotes win. A foul called on Mitrovic underneath. They will catch it on Alex Germer. And this game has slowed down just a tad with a couple fouls back and forth. Mitrovic misses two, and the student section loves it. Peoples. Handron takes a screen, attacks, dumps off to Rogers, who tries to go over the top of multiple defenders, hits the ground hard. He is up shortly, or quickly rather. No foul was called on it. And just out of bounds. Sub comes in for Northwest. His first minutes for Devontae Powell. Officials just went to check something at the scores table. Not entirely sure what. Germer on a post up, spins baseline, elevates, hits. <laughs> Howard dumped down to Hagen. Hagen's having himself a day. And the back end of the bench has dropped the shooting shirts and made their way to the scores table. Wilson, oh he couldn't finish the wraparound dunk, but it still falls through. Wilson's got five points. Skip pass, Howard, partially deflected by Handren. Wilson then has it knocked away by Powell. Powell takes it out of bounds and turns it over to the Yotes, 2.59, and the Warmers are in the game. Dougie Peoples will stay, he will be joined by Tyler Harris, Isaac Mercer, Brian Strings, and Beaver St. Clair. Pardon me, Aaron Strings. As Aaron Strings takes a three and strings it! There's no drop off with the third unit. Who are you talking to? Powell in the deep corner finds Hagen. Picked up by Strings. Spins back to the left. He has been a spin factor 
all game long. That is the one move. And Micaiah Hagen, a 6'8", 250 freshman, all the way out from Tampa, Florida. About, just about as far as you can get from home to go to college, from Tampa, Florida to Kirkland, Washington. Strings wants another. I think that was deflected. And the officials did see it. There's an override. So last time these teams saw each other in this gym, it was a 38-point blowout. That is currently the difference. Strings, the drive on Mitrovic and finishes off the glass. Another good finish by Hagen. He's got 20 points. Mercer on the dribble, handoff. Peoples spins back right, steps through, kicks back. St. Clair comes to Corral. Starts the offense again at 15. Wants the one on one. Looking for help. Peoples driving. No foul called. Powell, transition, pull up. Offensive board, Hagen stolen away by the Peoples. Into the corner, Sinclair! Offensive board, Peoples goes up with the right hand, got fouled. Christian Zamora credited with the foul. Logan Jackson, a freshman out of Oregon, checks in, as does Matt Amana, a sophomore from Hawaii. Peoples, two for two at the line. Three ball, way off the mark. Isaac Mercer pulls down the board. A 40-point lead with 60 seconds. St. Clair calls out the play. St. Clair opens up for three. Bottoms! This kid hits! It just soaks up the love. Deep three can't respond. Amano the offensive board. Jackson looking for another shot. Kicks out to Powell, just slithers off the rim. Shot clock turns off, and a 43-point victory in the quarterfinals of the conference tournament. This team is going places. Semifinals right here in the J.A. Albertson Activity Center, 7.30 p.m. on Saturday the 2nd. Another big win for the Yotes. Colby Blaine back on the sideline next time out after serving his one game suspension for an ejection. But the Yotes come out on top once again. 103-60. Yotes will see you Saturday night.